Okay, I wrote down four starter problems to practice, and I encourage you to pause the video. The best way to study is for you to do problems. If you watch me do them, you're not really studying very well. Because it's one thing to see it done by somebody else, and it's way more significant for you to do it by yourself. Even if you make mistakes, you're going to learn way more than just watching me. So pause and do these four problems on your own. And then when you're done, push play and check your work. Go ahead and pause. <laughs> okay. Um, I hope you did it. Let's, let's see how these go. Okay, so there's a law here. Everything in the group gets this power of 3. So this would be 2 to the 3rd power and 7 to the 3rd power. Now it turns out we can simplify this a little bit. Sorry, it's not focused there. It'll come back. Uh, 2 to the 3rd power is 2 times 2 times 2. 2, 4, 8. Uh, 7 to the 3rd power is 7 times 7 times 7. Now, 7 times 7 is 49. And 49 times another 7 is 243. I'm trying to... Uh, at one time I had remembered memorized the 3rd power of 7. And I'm just going to check it real quick here. I was wrong. My memory didn't serve me well. I was close though. Uh, 7 times 7 is 49. And take 49 times one more 7. And the answer comes out to 343. And it's okay if you, if you have to use your calculator for that. Um, 343. Okay, so that's the best we're going to get. We uh, simplified that fraction by getting rid of the parentheses, getting rid of the exponents, and we got a big fraction. Next one x to the 9 times x to the 4 times x to the 7. What's the rule here? Well, if you have bases times the same base, you just add up the powers. And I have a lot of them here. So x to the 9th, x to the 4th is add 9, and 4 is 13. x to the 13th times 7 more x's equals x to the 9 plus 4 plus 7. You wouldn't have to write that down for my benefit. You could just do all the math and come up with 20 power. That's what you should have gotten. Okay, this one's slightly different. I have one base, only the base is W. It has a power of 6 on it, so W to the 6th is raised to another power. This is a power on a power, and hopefully you're remembering the rule for that. You multiply the powers as a shortcut, and we get W to the 42 power. Uh, last one of these kind of simple quick warm-ups is 3c to the third power. Now there's a law here that says, hey, number three, all the stuff in the parentheses gets the power. So that means three gets a third power. And that means c gets a third power. So that is the exponent law. However, we can simplify this a little bit more because three is a whole number cubed. That's three times three times three. And 3 times 3 is 9, times another 3 is 27c cubed. There's the simplest answer. But we got all of these by doing the exponent laws here. All right, let's practice a few more. I'm going to uh, make them more difficult. All right, I added three new practice problems. So I made them a little bit harder now. We're going to have to use all of our exponent laws to simplify them as much as possible. And so again, I encourage you to pause the video and, you know, on a piece of scratch paper or something, work them out and see if you can work them all the way through and come up with a simplified answer. So pause now and give them a try. Okay, hopefully you paused, hopefully you worked them all out. Now, the problem E, we have a big group of stuff here. And the big group of stuff has a second power. So the second power goes on all of this. Now, some of this you might be able to do in your head, but I won't just so you can see my thinking. But I got this fraction, negative 2 thirds, and I've got a second power. Now, the negative 2 thirds is made up of the, the top, of course, and the bottom, and it gets a second power. Now, the a squared gets the power. 
and the b cubed gets the power and the c to the fourth power gets the power and I made a typo here everything notice how all four of them have second power second power second power second power applied to every factor in this group now like I said some of you could do this in your head because the second power of a squared is 2 times 2 is 4 you could have skipped that and just said a to the fourth and the second power on b cubed well that's 3 times 2 is 6 so you could have just skipped this and put b to the sixth and likewise on all of them so but this one we got to think a little bit more carefully uh, the second power also goes on the fraction but how do you do the fraction well everything in there gets the power so the top is going to be squared and the bottom is squared so the top squared what's a negative 2 times a negative 2 comes out to be positive 4 and 3 times 3 comes out to be positive 9 and then the a squared becomes a to the fourth b cubed squared comes out b to the sixth and c to the fourth squared comes out c to the eighth there's the simplified answer of that original problem now problem f i want you to pay attention with me it's tricky and i don't know about you guys but my past students would often make mistakes with this this is our first one that has a negative power and what have we learned a negative power makes reciprocals so if we have a negative power that goes on the bottom and then the power becomes positive well in this problem the negative problem power makes a reciprocal so we're going to have a fraction what goes on the bottom now some of you may have put 4x on the bottom to the fifth power over 1 and that's not right this is wrong it's incorrect but wait, I thought you said the negative power makes a reciprocal, so this goes on the bottom. Well, that is correct, but here is the catch. The negative power only applies to x. This power is only touching the x factor, so the x is the only thing that goes on the bottom. So this would be correct. Notice the x's went down. Well, what about the 4? The 4 is just multiplying this problem. So now it's correct that way. Um, you, In your mind's eye, you could think of this negative 5 as only being on the x's. So in your mind's eye, you could think, oh, the parentheses around this. And so I reciprocate the x's like that times by 4. In your mind's eye, you could also think about 4 as a fraction. 4 over 1 and so 4 over 1 you would multiply the top and you would get 4 and the x's go on the bottom and now they're a positive fifth power that's the simplified answer 4 is on top x to the fifth on the bottom now if you had written the 4 out front that is also correct now all that compared with this problem 4 x grouped to the minus 5. Now this minus 5 is on the whole group. So that's what we would need for them both to go on the bottom. So a negative 5 power on the whole group puts the whole group down there. The negative 5 power becomes a positive 5 power, but the fifth power is still on the whole group, which would equal 1 over 4 to the fifth, x to the fifth, and we could, that's probably simple enough. I mean, if we wanted to, we could put that in the calculator and go 4 times 4 times 4 times 4 and uh, figure that out. But that's the point is, this negative power was on the whole group, so every factor in the group went on the bottom. This negative power, even though it didn't have parentheses, you kind of have to think about it in your mind that, oh, it's only on the x's. The power only touches x's, so only x's go down. Okay, last one, G. There are two ways to do this problem. And both ways would be okay because all these exponent laws are, for the most part, multiplying and dividing things. And those, the commutative law gives us a lot of flexibility there. So what I'm trying to say is you can do the laws in different orders and come out right. 
Now this has a fraction inside, so and a power outside, so it kind of looks like this law. But inside is a division, which kind of looks like this law. So we're looking at rule two because of the inside part of this. And we're looking at rule five because we have a power outside the fraction. So we have to do rule two and rule five. Now, it doesn't really matter which order you do them in, but as a convention, if you have a group, the order of operations says do the inside first. So I'm not going to do the second power. I'm going to choose to do rule two first, make the inside better. Now, since they're both x's and x's, there's a law here that says, oh, that's division. The power will be three power minus seven power. We'll have to do that math. And later, we'll take care of that square on the outside. So this will equal negative th uh, 3 minus 7 is a negative 4 power. OK, so on the inside, three of these x's canceled out seven of those x's and left four on the bottom. If you're really good with intuition on fractions, you could think of it that way, too. Three of these canceled, I'm left with one. Three of these canceled, and I'm left with four. So we have one over x to the fourth. That's a, a way to do that problem. But when I subtracted the powers, this is kind of the long way I got this. But the inside is done. Now I have a power on the group. This power of two is on that whole group. Well, a power on the power is a multiply problem. So we're going to have x, 2 times negative 4 is negative 8. All right, so it's almost simplified. There is a convention, though. Negative powers are not the simplest expression. So if you run into a negative power, you've got to finish it and make your powers positive. So if you have a negative power, finish it, make it a positive power. OK, well, that just means a reciprocal, 1 over x to the 8th. So when I used rule 2 and subtracted, it took a little longer. If you can cancel fractions and you get 1 fourth over 1 over x to the fourth, then second power of that, it's a little faster because 1 squared is 1. x to the fourth squared is x to the eighth. 